What is the appropriate level of commitment? In the relationship and dating work my wife and I do, commitment issues are some of the most common challenges that we confront with people. And what we find is that most people when they're asking for commitment don't really know what they're asking for and they certainly don't know how to ask for it. In this video, I wanna talk about the appropriate level of commitment at each stage of the game and how you know if the person you're dating is demonstrating that level of commitment. One of the biggest misconceptions we have when it comes to dating and relationships is the idea that commitment is something that does not exist in the beginning and then one day because of a conversation we have or something we get commitment and then from that point forward we have it. That is not the way it works and it's a huge misconception and it actually uh, that misconception is the idea that leads to 99% of commitment problems in a relationship. Because commitment is not something that you don't have and then you get and then you have it. Commitment is something that exists all the time or should exist all the time. Sometimes we try to date people with zero commitment, but that never works. But commitment is something that should exist all the time. And the way it should happen is it starts at a low level of commitment in the beginning and that low level of commitment gets higher and higher and higher as time goes along. So if you imagine I have a timeline here at the bottom of the screen, as time goes on this way, commitment should go up this way. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's just take a few examples. What's the appropriate level of commitment on a first date? Well, uh, one, to show up and to be on time. I, I think if you, would, if you would not show up late to a job interview, why would you show up late to a date? I think that's a great question. If I wanna make a good impression on this person, if I am genuinely interested in them and getting to know them and potentially having a relationship with them, why would I show up late to our date? That would make a bad impression. So showing up showing up on time shows genuine interest. It shows a, a level of commitment there. Um, what else? Well, being genuinely interested in you, asking you questions, getting to know you, being curious about you, showing a genuine desire and interest in getting to know you. That is a level of commitment that's needed on a first date. Having a desire for a second date, saying, hey, this was great. I would love to do it again soon. That is, for me, a, a genuine, uh, or I should say a uh, uh, an essential level of commitment on a first date. If that is not there, I wouldn't really want a second date with that person. So here are just a few ways that you can identify the appropriate level of commitment on a first date. In those first few weeks that you're getting to know each other, the appropriate level of commitment is to make a genuine effort to call, to text, to talk, to video chat, to set up your next date and, and to show up for that and to honor the plans that you make with each other, whether, whether that's to talk on the phone, whether that's to show up for a date, whatever it is to, when you make plans with each other to honor Honor those plans. That shows a genuine level of commitment. So whereas at first it was like, okay, we're going to meet at three o'clock for coffee. That was the first commitment. Well, now it's like, okay, so I'm texting you good morning. And I do that on a consistent basis. That's a higher level of commitment than just meeting at three o'clock for coffee. You know, now it's like, well, hey, we, now the level of commitment goes up. So as we get further into the relationship, now we're talking on the phone every day and we're seeing each other two, three times a week. The level of commitment is naturally increasing. And it's not about forcing it. It's not about making someone to do that. There's genuine interest in here. So the level of commitment is gen, uh, naturally just getting higher and higher and higher as you go along. Now, here's what happens in a lot of relationships. And this is a huge thing to watch for. When you're dating someone, there's genuine interest, there's genuine conversation, and the level of commitment is going up and up and up and up, and then it just stops and levels off or even goes down to nothing. When that happens, what you're seeing in that is that they have lost their desire for the relationship. Maybe they already got what they wanted from it. Maybe they got to know you and, and decided, you know what, I don't think this person is for me. It, there could be a lot of reasons that it happens. Why it happens is not important. And a lot of people wanna go down the, down the rabbit hole with, why did it happen? Why didn't they wanna be with me? Why was it so strong in the beginning and then it dropped off? Why did they change their mind? What happened? What did I do wrong? That is a huge trap that you don't wanna fall into. 
Why is not important. What's important is the fact that it did happen. What's important is they showed commitment at the beginning and then it fell off or it leveled off and they stopped making that effort. They stopped being consistent. When that happens, they are not demonstrating the appropriate level of commitment. If they're showing you less commitment at three months than they were showing you at three weeks, that is a sign that the relationship is not headed in the right direction. It's actually headed in the wrong direction. It's actually going where you don't want it to go. And continuing to invest in that is continuing to invest in your own disappointment, your own suffering. Now, why is what I'm saying important? Because by knowing the appropriate level of commitment at each stage of the game. So here's our, when I'm going to a first date, I know how to identify the appropriate level of commitment in this person. In our first few weeks of talking and texting, I know how to identify the appropriate level of commitment in this person. Three months in, you know, once you get to about three months, you should be looking at making this relationship exclusive, being boyfriend, girlfriend, taking it a little more seriously. You're not just dating anymore. You've had an opportunity to get to know each other are you actually interested in this or not? It doesn't really take more than three months to decide that. So around that three month mark, it should be like, okay, you know, like, yeah, let's make it exclusive. Let's see where this goes. Let's give this relationship an honest chance. You know, in that period between three months and a year, you should be making accommodations to have a life together and, and making more effort into the relationship and creating boundaries with each other and having those difficult conversations and working through some of your first challenges as a couple. That's the things you do in your first year together. You know, my, my wife and I, in our relationship, we were long distance for the first three years. I was in Florida, she was in New Jersey. And in that first year, uh, in that period, you know, between three months and a year, what we did was we rearranged our entire work schedules to accommodate for our relationship. So I could spend time in New Jersey and she could spend time in Florida. Now, I may, either one of us may have said, listen, my work is more important to me. I'm not willing to make those accommodations. And if either one of us had said that, that wouldn't have made us a bad person. And this is really important. That would have just said, this over here is more important to me than our relationship. And if that was the case, that would have been a message to the other person that, that one, whichever one it was, was not willing to step into that higher level of commitment. That I was not willing to make the necessary arrangements in my work life to have our relationship thrive and to have it work uh, long term. That when it, when it really came down to it, my work was more important to me than having that relationship. And that's not what we did. We actually made those accommodations. But if we hadn't, and I want to be really clear about this, that wouldn't have made us a bad person. We that would have just revealed what was most important. And that would have been a message to the other person that continuing to invest in this relationship, when I'm over here making all these accommodations in my life for the relationship, and this person is not doing any of that on their side, if I continue to invest in a relationship like that, when this person is demonstrating to me that they are not making the relationship as important as I am, that would have been a mistake on my part to continue investing. So that's the first year. You, you start practicing a life together. You start practicing being committed to each other. You see if you're willing to do what's necessary to honor that commitment to building a life together and to see where that goes. And that's what happens in the first year. Once we get beyond the first year, you know, you've, you've established that you, you do have a high level of commitment to this relationship and you've established that you do really want to be together and you're willing to do what it takes to make it work. Well, then you start looking at it. What are we going to do? Are we going to move together? Are we going to travel the world together? Are we going to, uh, are we going to start a family? Are we going to buy a house? Are we going to get married? Like whatever those desires are for you and whatever you've discussed in your relationship that you want to do, once you get past that one year mark, that's when you start doing it. And, and it goes on and on from there. And the level of commitment gets higher and higher and higher and higher as you go along. Once you buy a house, once you have kids, once you like the level of commitment just keeps going up and up and up. But what you want to understand here is that if in the beginning, in the first couple of months, the level of commitment offers, or excuse me, the level of commitment levels up or levels off here. They're demonstrating to you that that, that relationship doesn't really have a future. It's like for three months, we're good. And then as soon as we have the conversation about uh, being committed, it just levels off and I stop making effort and I stop putting the work in and I stop showing you the attention and I stop or, or I'm never willing to take that next step. I'm never willing to level up. It's not going to go like this and level off and then suddenly one day go back up. That's not how it works. 
when two people genuinely are interested in building a life together and are genuinely interested in having a relationship, their level of commitment to each other and to the relationship will become greater and greater and greater over time. And when there is not that genuine interest on one side or both sides, that level of commitment is going to level off. And here's the thing. I have worked with many, many people who stayed in a relationship for 10 years, but the level of commitment leveled off at three months and never grew in 10 years. And this is what I want to say. If you allow that to happen, you will end up bitter. You will end up resentful. You will lose your faith in people and you will lose your faith in love because you've been giving and giving and giving and giving and having somebody that you loved and cared about take and take and take and take. And that will break your heart and you will lose your faith in people. What you have to do is you have to love yourself enough to expect the level of commitment to go up over time. And when it's not, to address it and invite that person into the level of commitment that you're looking for. And if they can't get on board with that, then you have to walk away. There is no benefit to investing in someone who is not making that equal investment in you. So as your level of commitment rises, you wanna see that other person's level of commitment rise to match yours, and that's what creates a conscious and loving relationship. I would love to hear your thoughts on this. Tell me about it in the comments below. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching today, and we'll see you again soon. Thank you.